Good morning, everybody. Mike Tedeschi, Investment Strategist over at Perspective Wealth Planning. In this week's video, we're going to take a look at the four major U.S. indexes. We're also going to take a look at some areas of the market that have actually made and kept new all-time highs here over the last couple of months to see really where we have relative strength and see if there's anything that we can deduce by taking a look at those areas of the market. So let's jump right in. Uh, first and foremost, as we spoke last week, the bulls really did not want to see the overall market fail at this juncture. Um, this is a very similar action that we had um, back in May where we made marginal new all-time highs for a day and then turned around and made a sharp reversal um, in the opposite direction. Um, we have fallen uh, pretty much since we made the video last week. However, the bears really can't say that they have accomplished anything. We're still holding over the 10-day moving average. We have not actually made a legitimate breakdown, but the bulls were not able to make that breakout to those highs and hold on to them. So that's a, uh, a little bit of a win there for the uh, bears so far. Uh, we really got to pay very close attention here. I think a fall back underneath that 2,900 level on the uh, S&P would uh, certainly give some more credence to the possibility that we've got a uh, you know a two-month-long essentially double top here, and that we might go back and really the main level of support on the S&P, like we've talked about many times before, is right at that 2,700 level. So I think uh, a lot of importance at this juncture right here. We're going to pay very close attention. We did not get a new high out of the Nasdaq. It did not make a uh, a new high. After the push in May, we made a pullback. We held the support, just like we talked about um, in the last video, but we did not push and take out that 7850 zone. Um, so no new high there out of the uh, the NASDAQ. It's very hard for us to continue to rock and roll forward without uh, tech kind of leading us. Um, and let's take now a look at the Dow. We come in here, we take a look at the Dow. We have not had a new high all year uh, out of the Dow. Um, you know, some of that has to do with a couple of uh, components inside the Dow. I've had some issues, but you know, as an index, um, it has not breached and made those new highs. It tried uh, last week, but once again, failed at that same level um, that it that it failed back in May, and has pushed. Low. We're going to continue to pay very close attention to this zone right here, same as the other indexes. All right, we did not break back underneath the 10-day moving average. The bears really have not won anything, so to speak. We just have not gotten that push um, to those highs um, as of yet. Now, we take a look at the Russell. Once again, weakest index has been the weakest in this. We talked about this a number of times. Um, you know, it clearly is. It stayed the majority of the last year underneath its 200-day moving average. It's still underneath the 200-day moving average right here. Nowhere near new highs. Nowhere even near taking out May's highs. Um, you know, the rest of the indexes, even if they didn't do it, were very, very close. This is about 4% away from taking out uh, the May highs. So one of the ways that some people are... are uh, Taking a look at the Russell right here would be a potential uh, head and shoulders type setup. Now, this is one of those patterns that is the most misunderstood, most misused in the stock market. And that is when people see a head and shoulders top or a head and shoulders bottom, they immediately call something as bearish or bullish. Look, the head and shoulders needs its confirmation, and the way it gets its confirmation is a break of what's known as the neckline, that area of support down there. So for a head and shoulders top to be playing out on the Russell, we actually need a break below that neckline, which would be about that 1450. Underneath of there, then you could call this a confirmed head and shoulders. Um, as it sits right now, this is not the greatest looking index. Um, again, underneath the 200-day moving average has stayed under there for a while, so certainly relative weakness against the overall market, um, but I can't call this as a uh, head and shoulders top, not unless we were to break underneath of that neckline. So we're going to pay very close attention um, to this area. Now, what I really wanted to take a look at here is where have we seen really, really uh, strong action over the last couple of months? What have been really the leaders of the overall market? And it's actually surprising where we have been. It's actually been in safety names. So if we take a look at uh, the dividend uh, area of the market. So here's the uh, NASDAQ Dividend Achievers Index, right? It has been massively leading us here, right? Clean breakout and has continued to push um, and continues to push. Uh, really since uh, a move back in March. Um, so that is that is a lot of strength. And we take a look at telecoms as another area of safety, typically uh, high-yielding 
uh, safety names, right? They're not super growth names. They just pay that really solid yield, good, solid companies. All right, that had made the breakout to those new highs at the beginning of the year and has continued to push up and has held on uh, pretty sharp, pretty strongly here. Utilities. Uh, we got new highs out of utilities last week. And again, that made the breakout. We've talked about this uh, earlier this year back in March and has continued to, uh, to push higher. Um, and lately, I know a lot of people have been talking about gold. We looked at gold in the uh, last video. The uh, gold bug index um, making a uh, new multi-year high here. Um, clean breakout uh, this year um, over the last week or so, kind of setting up in a potential um, bull flag. And if we take a look at this on a longer time frame, right, this has been a long basing uh, action that's happening here. So um, certainly something uh, looks to be brewing in the surface underneath the gold trade. Um, consumer discretionary and um, and consumer staples are also uh, have made new highs and, and are acting stronger than the overall market. So to really take a look at what's been leading us here as of late, it's been a lot of those safety names. Does that mean that the market is going to crash here? Absolutely not. What that is said is really, as we've taken a look here over the last couple of uh, months, that we have really seen a flow from riskier asset classes into safer asset classes in preparedness of some sort of economic worry. And that makes sense seeing all the economic news, um, the data points that we've seen globally and even in the U.S. have not been super strong. We have tariffs. We have a lot of headwinds that essentially have been um, hitting us and so if people are looking at where they want to put their capital they have not been putting it into the riskier asset classes like uh, the mid and small caps they have been putting them into higher yielding safer type of names now that is just a rotation as of right now right so that's a rotation into safety names right what would be the healthiest would be to see those areas of the market kind of pause base money come out of those safety names and rotate into things like the Russell, rotate into things like the semiconductors and the tech uh, uh, area of the market if we're going to continue to push and make those new highs. That would be healthy rotation. Um, if we don't see that capital flow out of those safety names and back into the other areas of the market, that is giving me a cautionary tale because, again, I don't like seeing outperformance from safety assets. When gold is outperforming a lot of things over a, you know, a couple month period, that's a cause for a concern. Again, doesn't mean that the market is going to crash by any stretch of the imagination. It just is telling us that we need to pay attention because money currently is seeking safety. Um, so we'll continue to watch. Again, you know, we did make... New highs on the uh, S&P 500 three, four days ago, so it's really hard to get very bearish when something like that has happened. Um, but again, there is a lot of area for concern. We didn't make new highs across all four of the indexes. The Russell has been lagging substantially. And when we uh, put all of these pieces together, it still behooves us to be uh, a bit cautious here. And of course, if we get that all clear, if the market makes a new high, if we make new highs on the NASDAQ, the Dow joins the, the party in there and we start to see some strength out of the Russell, then of course we would continue to pay attention to things in on the long side. Uh, because one of the other ways that we could very easily take a look at this market is that we have spent the last year and a half uh, two years in a long-term base, and there is a potential for a major breakout right here. And that is something that we have to keep in mind. So, you know, this has happened a bunch of times, um, you know, in the, in the past, where you have multi-year kind of sideways actions, you get your breakout, and the market just runs. So this zone right here is very, very important. If we can actually push and make that move to the upside, um, you know, take a look in at uh, at uh, some long names across the board and uh, if we continue to kind of pause and hold right here again take a more cautious approach hope you guys have yourselves a fantastic week as always take care